This is I'm Stuck, and today we are looking at our second video in the Tudor series and how did Henry VII consolidate his power. So after successfully defeating Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth, Henry did many things to consolidate his power. And as we saw in our last video about how weak his claim to the throne was, it was quite clear that he needed to show that he was the rightful king of England, and obviously it wouldn't be easy. So the first thing that Henry did was he dated his reign from the 21st of August 1485. Now the Battle of Bosworth was on the 22nd of August, so by this he was showing that he was king before the Battle of Bosworth. Now this meant that anybody who fought against him at the Bo Battle of Bosworth could be treated as traitors and they could be accused of treason as they are fighting against the king, where he was stating that he was the king of this time, even though officially it was Richard III. Now this meant that he was able to imprison many of these um, Yorkists who had a better claim to the throne than himself. Um, an example of this may be the Earl of Warwick, who was the son of Edward IV's brother. Another thing Henry did was he organised his coronation to take place on the 7th of November. Now this was before one of the parliamentary meetings and normally because of how weak his throne he would have needed a parliamentary sanction uh, to strengthen his claim to the throne. However, because he organised his coronation beforehand, it showed that he had a right to the throne based on hereditary right, rather than only because of a parliamentary sanction. This meant it was less likely for people to complain that he was king, um, as it looked as if he was an ancestor or was a rightful king, despite the fact that his claim was so weak. Now, we will talk about this in much more depth in our next video, but another way that he consolidated his power was how he dealt with the nobility of the country. And some of his supporters were well rewarded, um, while others were punished, uh, not his supporters of course, but people who challenged him were often punished. And some supporters who were well rewarded included Jean de Vere, uh, Thomas Stanley, William Stanley, who we talked about in the last episode as helping um, Henry VII out at the Battle of Bosworth, um, and John Morton as well, who became um, late, who was became the Lord Chancellor and then later a Cardinal. So this ensured that Henry VII had the ability to maintain talented men. And this was a key element in the stability of the government as he had people dotted around the country who he could use to enforce laws and um, gain order around the country. However, nobles whose loyalty was suspect uh, were stripped of their lands and their titles in the Parliamentary Acts of Attainder. We will talk about this in a lot more detail as it is important, but basically it meant that their property was forfeited to the crown. And not only did this um, decrease the power of the nobility, but it also increased the revenue of the crown and of Henry VII himself. Now, the next point is extremely important because this was a major point which really united um, the Tudors together from the Yorkists and the Lancastrians. And this is where we get the Tudor Rose from. And this was his marriage to Elizabeth of York. Um, who was the daughter of King Edward IV. Now, obviously, um, she was a Yorkist and Henry VII was a Lancastrian, so this was the unification of the two houses, one thing that could be used as propaganda for Henry VII. Um, but he did make sure that he married Elizabeth of York um, after he was coronated to make sure that people said that he did not gain the throne simply from his wife. Um, so he did make sure that, but it was one thing um, which was extremely important as Henry tried to consolidate his power. Now, another reason why this step was so important was because Elizabeth of York gave birth to an heir to the throne, Prince Arthur. Now, as we know in future, Prince Arthur never actually became king as he died, so it was ended up being Henry VIII, but at the time this was so important as it was a vital step in securing the Tudor dynasty. There was an heir to the throne and there was someone who could take over after Henry VII. So all of these steps were extremely important and it allowed Henry to consolidate his power um, successfully without having too much opposition or being overthrown or killed like Richard III. 
So thank you for watching this video. Next video we'll look at the nobility of a country and how he dealt with nobility as we've touched on today. But for now, see you soon. Bye.